We're virtual systems engineering, and we make software that analyzes circuit cards, tries to predict failures, mistakes, breaks on a computer before you see them in the real world. <clears throat> now, why does that really matter? Maybe you know what a circuit card looks like. It's kind of a green board, but what's it have to do with anything? <clears throat> well, if you're like me, last weekend, this is how you were feeling because there was a problem. You went to the the thermostat, and you saw error 11.2. And what that meant was that your air conditioning bro was broken. I looked up error 11.2 for a Fujitsu air conditioning system. And what it means is there's a lack of communication with a PCB, a printed circuit card, it's a printed circuit board. <clears throat> so that's one specific problem that kind of agitated my personal weekend. But circuit cards really uh, are inhabiting anything that's got electricity running through its veins. Anything that does anything for you uh, probably has some form of a circuit card in it. <clears throat> and when they break, the lights go out. <clears throat> uh, but this has to do with more than just the lights or comfort uh, or air conditioning. The implications are very broad from power plants to medical equipment, to laptops and security, to missiles, or uh, space shuttles, but why do they why do they break? What's going on underneath? Um, now, a bird can creep into your air conditioning and get electrocuted and then short circuited, or they can actually crack from being dropped, vibration, uh, contacts come loose, all sorts of things. But fundamentally, fundamentally, not always, but often, these problems stem from a lack of linking or communication between all the different software that's used to analyze a circuit card. Like good engineers, we all sit in different cubicles. And you have one person that does a, a physical design, another person does turns that into CAD, another person somewhere is doing electrical design, somebody gathers data, they analyze that data, they do thermal analysis, and by the time they get there, the beginning has changed. And nobody's talking to each other. So wouldn't it be nice if we had some way for these software systems used to analyze that circuit card in your air conditioning to talk to each other, to speak the same language, to send data easily between each other. What if they could all speak the same language? What if we agreed they're all going to speak English? All right, we can do that. Problem is, that's what the common data looks like. Uh, literally, you want to describe a circuit card? Not literally, but almost literally. It's a tremendous amount of data. And the software used to translate that, to take all that information and read it, send it to another software system, is often embedded in a larger analysis package. It's expensive. It's difficult to, to use. So what if we had software to analyze circuit cards all in one place, the same way that your architect analyzes your building. And that's a picture of what the preview software looks like. Well, that's what preview does. It's software to analyze, visualize circuit cards. It's relatively inexpensive. It's much easier to use. And this is the team that drives that. It's a bit of a fire hose, but it's a very diverse group. Generally, a little more on the technical side, and we can help use some help uh, getting more expertise on, on the sales uh, and financial side. <clears throat> In terms of the market, we think it's pretty broad, um, electronic design automation. But the, the beachfront, where we want to start, uh, is about 7 million engineers, primarily in advanced manufacturing. <clears throat> and these folks reside in markets that focus on relatively complicated systems for which there's lower volume. Um, so, so the risks of failure are higher. You only want to make one missile. Um, a power plant control system is rather complicated. Ultimately, we'll go to higher volume markets uh, that have simpler products. <clears throat> now, what do these people look like? They take two different flavors. Um, your bench electrical engineers that just want to access some software for the most they can spend on their procurement card without asking for somebody to be able to visualize virtually what that young lady is looking at physically, as well as program managers that have a lot of information coming into one place. You want to be able to visualize that 
with something a little more effective than cutting pasting results onto PowerPoint. So what are they doing today? Well, there are solutions to this. Rather large players, it's not a very segmented market, but they sell complicated software. Some of the simple basic capabilities um, come only come with very expensive software. They tend to be closed. Uh, they don't integrate necessarily. Um, they're not interoperable. So that's the kind of problem that we want to address. Uh, as I mentioned, there are players. These Zoo Mentor Graphics and Zookin uh, dominate about 80% of the, the, the market, um, but they are expensive. They are difficult to use. There's a steep learning curve. What we would sell primarily is licenses of software. There's a range. Right now, there's the, the minimal viable product that we have that we're getting ready to launch, available on the web for $500. There are then additional layers of the software at different levels of stages of development that would go up in price. We would do some custom development so that future versions of the software reflect additional customer needs, market needs, and there's some services. We'll use the software for you. In terms of what we want to do next, we have a trial release coming up to early adopters um, to test and provide feedback. Uh, after that is a more formal launch, a preview viewer, just that ability to visualize all the different aspects of a circuit card. After that, we'd like to re-engage uh, with angel investors that we've spoken to in the past. Uh, going forward, there's some potential um, to extend a relationship we have with NVIDIA, with Cadence, um, and with some contacts at the DOD and the Department of Energy. Financially, with an initial investment, um, some of which is covered by the, the owners, uh, this is what we're, we're looking at um, in terms of cash flow and profit loss. Uh, I will say at this point, these plots are based on a fairly aggressive um, sales projection that we probably ought to scale back. Ultimately, with the larger investment, and I can talk more about where this money would go. Um, in both cases, it'd be sales, penetrating new markets, some IP development in terms of additional capabilities. The initial ask, initial step towards the, the $100,000 would look something like this. Um, the ops would be covering basic operations. IP development covers some licensing of supporting software that we use. R&D would focus on reliability analysis capabilities that we have, uh, and sales would focus on uh, web page update, perhaps some third-party support, um, perhaps some uh, branding updates. <clears throat> and that's virtual systems engineering. Uh, I can try to field any questions. Thank you.